Listen and practice. Eddie and Casey did not like eating vegetables. They liked meat and fish. They liked rice and bread. They even liked apples, grapes, and bananas. But they did not like vegetables. One day, their mom told them a story. Long ago, the native people in Canada grew three special vegetables. They planted corn, beans, and pumpkins very close to each other in the garden. The corn grew strong and tall. The beans climbed up the big, strong corn stems. The pumpkins made big leaves as they grew. The leaves kept the ground cool and wet. The three vegetables helped each other. They were like three sisters in a family. That is why the native people call these vegetables the three sisters. They are very special. Little kids grow big and strong by eating corn, beans, and pumpkins. Now, Eddie and Casey eat their vegetables every day. Listen and practice. Bess was very upset. She hurt her arm in the backyard. She cried a lot. Her mom cleaned the cut and put a bandage on it. Her aunt gave her a glass of water. Bess, you know those tears running down your cheeks are falling to the ground? Yes, said Bess. Those tears go into the ground. The rain takes them to the river, and the river flows into the sea. Then the hot sun makes the wet air from the sea rise up into the sky. Her aunt said, This wet air becomes clouds. The clouds move over the land, and rain falls from them. That rain fills our lakes. Our drinking water comes from those lakes. Bess looked at the glass of water she was drinking. You mean I'm drinking my own tears, she said, smiling. Her aunt laughed. Maybe. Listen and practice. Some people do things for money. But Jonas Salk did things for people. Mr. Salk was born into a poor family. But he studied hard and became a scientist. At that time, a terrible childhood disease was killing many kids. It was making others very sick and unable to walk. It was called polio. It scared people everywhere. They wanted someone to find a way to protect children from this disease. But that was not easy. Nevertheless, Jonas Salk worked hard. In 1952, he discovered a vaccination that worked. Soon, polio began to disappear. The world was very happy. They honored the great scientist. Mr. Salk could have made a lot of money from his discovery. But he decided 
that he did not want to do that. He gave away his discovery for free. When a writer asked him why, he said, I want as many kids as possible to get this vaccination. That alone will make me happy. Listen and practice. I'm the youngest girl in my family. My older sisters liked scary movies. I did not. But still, I ended up watching a scary movie with them. I was trying to act older. After the movie, I went right to bed. But I couldn't sleep. Every sound was scary. Finally, I started to fall asleep. But then, I heard a noise under my bed. I was really scared. I screamed. My whole family came rushing into the bedroom. What is under the bed? I yelled. My dad reached under the bed and pulled out the monster. I screamed again. Then I laughed. It was our cat, Willie. Dad put Willie on the bed with me. I finally fell asleep. When I woke up in the morning, I said to my cat, No more scary movies for me, Willie. I could see that he agreed. It had been a scary night for him, too. Listen and practice. There were two cats. One was gray. The other was white. White lived in a warm house. Every day he sat by the window, looking outside and feeling all alone. Gray did not have a home. He ran outside catching leaves and chasing mice. He did not have any friends either. Winter was coming, and the days were getting colder. One day, a door opened. Gray looked in. He saw White looking at him. The house was warm. Gray smelled delicious cat food. He took a step into the house. Then he took another. Soon he was in the house. He looked around. It was safe and warm. White walked over. The two touched nose to nose sniffing each other. Soon they were cuddled together in the soft cat bed. Listen and practice. Alan's father wears a suit with a shirt and tie to work. Sometimes the shirt is blue. Sometimes it's green. Sometimes it's white. But every morning he needs Alan's help to get a tie that matches his shirt. What's the problem? Alan's father is colorblind. He cannot tell green from red. He cannot tell blue from green. Nearly one in ten men has some kind of color blindness. The most common kind is red green, but some people cannot see any colors at all. Imagine how hard that is. 
Think of how dull the world looks to someone who cannot see colors. Luckily, Alan's father has Alan to help him out. Still, it's a problem he lives with every day. Listen and practice. One day, Dad asked me to help him plant some green peas. We put them a few inches into the ground. We covered them with soil and watered them. Every day, I went out to check if anything happened. Days passed, and I started to think planting was a waste of time. Then, one day, as I was doing my usual check, I noticed something. There were little green leaves poking out of the soil. It may seem silly, but it was very exciting to see this. The seeds we planted turned into plants, and these plants were going to grow sweet little peas. It made me think about how everything grows, even how people grow. In some ways, we are not so different from those little peas, I said to my dad. We need food, water, and a place to grow. I learned a lot from those little seeds. Listen and practice. One day, my mom and I were looking at our family pictures. You look so much like your daddy when you smile, Mom told me. Really? I said. But I have your eyes, right, Mom? That's right. A couple of days later, while I was practicing my dancing, Mom said, Did I ever tell you that my daddy owned a dance studio? I bet you get your grace and love of dancing from him. Grandpa died before I was born. But after hearing my mom say this, I felt that I knew him better, since we had something in common. Who else am I like? Let's see. You have a lovely singing voice like Uncle Kevin. And you love girly things just like I did when I was your age. I like those pieces of me, I said as I ran upstairs to sing to my dolls. I like that there are pieces of me that are all my own. Listen and practice. Nine out of ten people in the world are right-handed. That means they use their right hands for doing things such as throwing, catching, and writing. But not everyone is right-handed. One person in ten is left-handed. Being left-handed is not a big problem now. But not so long ago, in Europe, left-handed people had terrible lives. Everyone believed that left-handed people were evil. If they were caught writing with their left hands, they could be killed. Left-handed children were forced to write with their right hands. They were often beaten until they stopped using their left hands. 
No one wanted to marry left-handed people. It was hard for them to get a job, and they often had no friends. Today, it's still not easy being left-handed. Most things in the world are designed for people who are right-handed. But the way we think about being left-handed has changed. We now know that left-handed kids are just normal kids who prefer using their left hand over their right to get things done. Listen and practice. Andrew and his family were out in their car. Dad was driving. Suddenly, a little bird flew into the windshield and fell. Stop! yelled Andrew. Dad stopped the car, looking sad. He said, The bird is probably dead. Andrew jumped out of the car, pulling off his woolly hat. Gently, he picked up the bird and put it in his hat. Then he put the hat inside his coat. All the way, Andrew kept the bird warm. When they got home, Dad said, We should bury that little bird, Andrew. Sadly, Andrew took his hat out of his coat and opened it. The little bird opened his eyes and looked at him. Dad, it's alive! Look! shouted Andrew. The little bird hopped onto his hand and then flew into a tree. Well done, Andrew! It was you who saved that little bird, said Mom.